You are listening to the Lawyer Stories Podcast with host Benny Gold. Lawyer Stories was founded in July 2017 on Instagram and is an expanding global network of lawyers and law students sharing their personal journeys to the noble profession of the practice of law. Join us on this podcast as we dig deeper into these stories and hear from lawyers and law students from around the world in all areas of the legal profession. Here at Lawyer Stories, we believe that every lawyer has a story. What's yours? Welcome to the Lawyer Stories podcast with Benny Gold. Uh, Thank you. We welcome in Shafali Lakani, attorney and founder at Lakani Legal, a business and IP law firm in New York, New York. Shafali, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Benny. It's, It's nice to see you again. Yeah, for sure. I'm pumped to have you on the show. You know why? Because you came to an event. In New York, it was super cool to meet you. I get so fired up for these events, if anybody knows. And it's because it's more than just a three hour happy hour or three hour mingle. This is like building community, making people be friends with each other, making people find their new business alliance. And you were there, Shafali, to witness all of it. So thank you for coming through. We, We really appreciate your support. Yeah, of course. It was a fantastic event. I met some really wonderful people. I joined I Will through it. Shout out to I Will, Uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I made some connections. It's it's really great to meet people in person. The the Zoom thing is great, but I think really building authentic connection happens in person. That's absolutely. That was Neil Goldstein's message there. He's our he's our boy. He um, spoke about uh, you know authentic and genuine connections, and that's what we're all about here at Lawyer Stories and deepening those connections. Uh, We'll be doing that with a designated space for that and Lawyer Stories Connect uh, on Mighty Networks launching in October. But Shafali, this episode is about you. You're doing some cool things. You know, you're a young entrepreneur. You went off on your own. Um, Very smart young lady. But I want to start from the beginning. Um, We haven't featured you on on the social media channels yet. We're going to do that within the next week. Let's go to the beginning of your lawyer story um, because I did read it where you share that you are a child of immigrant parents. So tell us what that was like. And you said, you kind of you kind of mentioned that you only had the option to go like two different routes. So do you wanna speak on that at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, a lot of immigrant children will be, or, or children of immigrants will be able to relate to this. But I think, you know, if you come from a family of immigrants, you're either a doctor or a lawyer, engineer. So I started off college. I, I went to Emory thinking I was going to be pre-med and, and got to organic chemistry and that didn't quite pan out. So not pretty <laughs> far in my book. Lawyer was the way it went. Uh, you know, I was an econ major. I really enjoyed reading, writing. Yeah. And so it felt like the the correct path to me as an 18 year old. So econ major, how come not like the big hedge funds in like New York or whatnot, or like finance? Oh, I, that was not even on my radar okay. at that Honestly, so I got into econ because I took a class in, it was a required class in 11th or 12th grade or whatever it was. Um, but econ to me felt so rational, right? Like it, it it makes so much sense. And it's the study of why people act the way they do when it boils down to it. And it's right. applicable to every single field because everyone wants to know why people are making the decisions they are and why people act the way they do. So, so I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was applicable to different industries. I enjoyed it. it. It sort of felt natural. Yeah. I mean, you made it to organic chemistry, you said. I think you could probably do anything at that point. I mean, I yeah. mind's blown at some of that stuff. So congratulations on making it that far. And so like, when did, was like, the, did you have like a moment or were you like, okay, well, I'm not going to become a, uh, you know, a doctor. And according to like my family, I have to go the other route. So like, was that how the decision was made? Kind of. Yeah. It was like uh, organic chemistry isn't quite working out. And no one ever explicitly said that I had to become a lawyer. It was more like, this is what I understood to be a good career path. There were a couple of good career paths. Uh, I I wasn't quite interested in being a doctor at that point. And and so my interests and skills kind of pointed to a different direction and, and that pointed to lawyer. That's awesome. Okay. So you, so when was that about, was that in like, was that at Emory? Like after you took the classes, did you start yeah. like taking more classes yeah. to towards law? That was probably more interesting? sophomore year of college. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I, I cut you off at the end of your question. Oh, that's okay. Like, did you start taking more classes at Emory? 
that were geared towards maybe like the legal path? A little bit. Um, okay. A lot of folks, folks go down the poli sci route. Yeah. I took poli sci classes. I studied abroad um, in Germany doing economics and poli sci. Wow. So that, excuse me, that was really interesting. And um, I, I took a, I took a wide range of classes, honestly, because there is no pre-law requirement. That's right. There's not. I mean, you find people doing all sorts of things that just go to law school, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. You don't have to take certain classes the way you do for med school. So right. I explored different things. I, I actually had two minors. I wasn't allowed to have two minors, so I ended up with one, but I started a poli-sci minor, and then I was a minor in global health, culture, and society, uh, which was a new minor at that time. That's so, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I tried theater. I tried, I tried all sorts of things. Yeah. That's the way to figure out what you like, really. I mean, global health, that's got to be kind of tough, too. I'm sure they wish they had, like, COVID to study in that uh, back then. You know, that would have been kind of interesting, but... Uh, Okay, so that that's great. So, you know, you were doing your thing at Emory and then did you go right to law school? No, I uh, took off a year. So I was still in Atlanta at that point and okay. I worked at SunTrust. So you mentioned banking. I guess I did go into banking go. For a year. All right. So I, my role was business analyst, but essentially similar to a financial analyst. Uh, what they were trying to do at that point was create like a shared services across the different business lines. So how can we streamline some of the reporting, um, right. some of the forecasting that was done by the different lines of businesses? Cool. All right. And then, so this is interesting. You took a year off. I did too, by the way, but like that was a million years ago when I went to law school. So um, you went to law school in Boston, BU. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. You were shipping up to Boston, as they say. Yeah. Right? So yeah. by the way, we might be having a Boston event soon. But anyway, so like we did in November last year, and I'm going to be talking about that in the next few days about maybe. So anyway, this shows about you. Um, and I want to hear about this because you shipped up to Boston, cold area, BU, fantastic law school. Um, yes. Tell us what your experience was like. Um, I, I had a good time. So uh, when I went to undergrad, Initially, I wanted to leave Atlanta. My family at that point had moved to Atlanta. I wanted to take a route outside of Atlanta, but sure. it didn't really quite pan out. So I was like, for law school, I'm heading out. Um, I went to visit Boston. I really liked it. It's a great college town. And yeah. so, uh, I ended up heading up there. Law school was incredibly stressful, incredibly difficult. Okay. But it took me time in, in that I met a lot of interesting people. Uh, I met great friends. And actually, a couple of them were in my wedding last year, so that that was nice. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations and, on being a newlywed, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. You know, going to law school is very different than practicing law, and yeah. that there's like so much more theory, and you're reading interesting. You're reading the most interesting things that happen in the law. Yeah. And so I thought that was fascinating, and it was uh, it was a little bit jarring to start practice after like studying. It was that. because you know going back to medical school, and I'll say this repeatedly here it's like i wish i had they forced you into some i mean people do their externships in their clinics but i wish it was a requirement for like third year like you have to go learn something practical because i think people learn that way you know and in med school they have they make you go do the rounds they make you see patients they make you you know have your your uh residency law school's theory right and then you get out and practicing and you get back a document from the lead attorney and it's got like it's like covered in red yeah Right. Yeah. So it's just totally different. It's so different. And like, it's so geared towards litigation too. So if you want to go into the corporate space, you have to make an active effort to take those classes, but even those don't really prepare you. Cause even if you take like a corporation's class, you're learning about case law. You're not like sitting there drafting up documents or, or really understanding what the day-to-day -day of like practicing as a transactional attorney would be like. Yeah. Wow. So what was your first job? Like, was it a big law firm? No. Um, so I started off at a smaller firm doing securities litigation, which is what I initially thought I wanted to do. Um, I, I didn't spend very much time there, quickly realizing that I would have preferred to practice corporate law. I wasn't really interested in sort of that adversarial component of litigation. 
I knew that I was interested in sort of the business side of things and, and I wanted to get in that direction in the long term. So I quickly made the switch to corporate firms after that. Gotcha. And you mentioned in your story, in your lawyer story, that you come from sort of an entrepreneurial family. Like, tell us a little bit about that. You don't have to really like, unless you want to like, tell us what your family does as entrepreneurs and like what it's like to have that entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Um, my parents like live the American dream. They came from India and, and they made it through Amazing. sort of entrepreneurial ventures. So my, <clears throat> my dad, my, both my parents came here in their twenties um, and, and started really from nothing, knowing very, very few people and, and kind of built their own empire, I guess you can call it. Wow. Um, now they, they dabble in a number of different things. So they own gas stations, they own real estate, wow. they like franchises, they own motels, uh, hotels. And so, so they're, they're big proponents of betting on yourself, taking a risk on yourself and, and working hard for yourself and, and having that pay off in the long term. And they probably wanted to see you do that, especially as a lawyer that I bet they were probably encouraging you to say, Hey, like you have this now, this is your this bar license is your ticket, right? Like you yeah. did not work for anybody, right? Is that sort yeah. of the encouragement you got? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So, te so tell us about like, like the feeling of like, when did you know it was time to launch your own firm? Um, so do you want me to step back and kind of give the yeah. little bit of the yeah. story? Yeah. Um, it was a long time coming. I, I always had an entrepreneurial itch and I think it wasn't always apparent to me what I was lacking um, in sort of the different careers and jobs that I had. But I think in working at the law firms, I knew something wasn't quite clicking. The culture wasn't quite quick clicking sort of the, it didn't quite pique my curiosity. I think the way I hoped a career would. And so I ended up leaving the law and going into innovation and tech and, and solving right. interesting problems <clears throat> and, and hoping to create some version of an impact. And I think when I left the traditional law firm practice, I thought creating an impact and building an impact meant that I had to go out in the world and build a crazy app or cure cancer. And that's what I was eventually hoping to do was to start my own company and, and build something. But I think in, in being in that space, I learned a lot about building a business and listening to customers and solving problems and creating your version of an impact. Right. And so I, I also thought about what the law was lacking, how it could often be inaccessible, it could be stuffy. And so a, a few different things came together in that I, I knew I could leverage all of these skills. I knew I wanted to kind of pursue this entrepreneurial dream. And it made sense to combine everything and start my own law firm. So it, it was like a, it was not one moment, but it was, it was a number of things coming together. So I knew I could sort of leverage my skills to support my clients after having worked on the other side of the table. Sure. I, could support yep. clients. I could really create my version of impact by building a culture where I can make the law more accessible. Um, and, and when I hopefully grow and hire others, I could create a law firm space for other people where they feel welcome. They don't feel like they have to show up in a certain way to practice law. Yeah. So long-winded answer is to- No, no, that's, that's amazing. Like you're really talking about your brand and like who you are and like the culture that you would have like at your firm. I think that's really cool. Like, do you have advice for somebody who'd like to think about launching their own law firm? Yeah, I, I think if you're looking to launch your own law firm, think about what it is you're lacking in your current role. So is it autonomy? Is it flexibility? Do you not like the way certain things are practiced? And really hone in on, on what it is you're looking for. Um, obviously, like many people go in for re many different reasons. If you're just going in thinking you're going to make a lot of money, you might not be happy with that decision. So right. Think about what you want and spend time speaking with other people. It's it's a lot of lot of work. Um, you know, as as uh, someone who's starting their own business and their own firm, you're really running the entire show, right? Like you're obviously doing the legal work, but you're doing the marketing, you're doing the operations, you're doing your head of IT, your security, like literally everything. And so before you make that leap, make sure you're ready to put in sort of the time and effort to maybe either learn these skills or bring on other people to help you with these skills. But but understand that it's a huge effort and a huge commitment and be ready for it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, 
So, so tell us about uh, Lakani Legal. What yeah. kind of cases are coming your way? And what yeah. kind of cases do you hope to get? Yeah, um, so uh, I work with small businesses, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurs, startups, and, and sort of creatives. And okay. I've seen clients across the board right now. Uh, so I have startup clients who are have done work in their startup, but now are in a place where they need to incorporate and need to get like the legal formalities in order and, and are starting to raise money. I have folks who are interested in trademarking their brand. I have folks that are interested, have started a real estate company and sort of need the formalities around that. I have folks who are have podcasting companies and, and need assistance in sort of building partnerships with other people. So really, I, I, I'm working with folks of industries and, and businesses, different industries and different businesses. Um, but I'd continue to love, I'd love, God, excuse me, I'd love to continue supporting um, people that are doing impactful work, that are sort of building the communities around them. Uh, I'd love to work with female founders, um, with with founders who are uh, of color, of immigrant parents, um, and and people who are doing exciting, creative things in in their space. That's amazing. Um, it sounds like you you know you really thought this through before you you hung a shingle, and you seem like somebody who loves to solve a problem, right? Like, I mean, you're just that's sort of why you took a step out of the legal box, and you were like solving problems, and now you know you're applying that to your work. Really, I mean, is it does it feel different every day, like the stuff that you're doing? Oh yeah, yeah, it's so different every day. I'm meeting all sorts of people, whether it's other lawyers or you know potential clients at networking events, and and everyone has an interesting story to tell, right? Like, yeah, you know. for sure. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm meeting all sorts of people, and and people bring me different problems to solve, and that's exciting. Um. And I and I love doing that. Sometimes I'll spend an entire day just on figuring out marketing and how to run Instagram and how to do LinkedIn. Yeah. So each day is a challenge. And I, I love that. I love the variety of the work. Yeah. And like I said, if you ever see anybody come across the Instagram feed that you think you would, you know, have good synergy with and like would help you or you could help them, like I'm happy to make a warm introduction. I love doing that. It, like it makes me like really, I don't know. There's something about it that I like love being able to like introduce people like that. So yeah, yeah, um, actually. It's totally um, my pleasure. Of course, I, I will definitely take you up on that. I uh, heard, so Mika Mooney, I heard her episode. Yeah. And and I reached out to her and and we ended up getting lunch and she's really? been a great resource. Yeah. So. Did you tell her you heard the podcast? I did, yeah. That's, that's, I, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. Here we go. That's how I reached so, out so to I her. I might have you write like a little summary so we could put that on uh, Instagram, you know, about like, okay, well, maybe we'll talk about that later. But that's that's great. No, I'm so happy. Like Mika was a great, a wonderful guest. She's doing a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we we work in similar spaces. So it's nice to have someone who's taken that path and, and been in it for a couple of years and to hear about sort of the challenges she's faced, but how she's overcome those challenges and how she's scaling her firm. So she's she's been a great resource. That's so great. I'm so happy to hear it. And I know you talk a lot about impact. So and you you just did, but I just kind of want to get more like concise. Like what does making an impact really mean to you? Making an impact is I think personal to each person. Okay. To me, it's supporting other people who are doing impactful work and building the communities around them. So I wanna be an advisor, a legal advisor, a business advisor, any type of advisor you need in, in sort of the wonderful work that you are doing. I wanna be a support system to you. Cool. So that's one, one way of making an impact for me. And the other way is, you know, like I said, by creating that culture, you know, in, in working at a couple of different law firms, I was definitely welcomed into those law firms, but I'm not the profile of what you expect a lawyer to look like. Um, and, and I'm not like the standard person that you expect from a, a big law firm. And, and I don't want anyone to feel like that they don't belong in that space or that they can't be themselves in that space, right? Because oftentimes you have to show up, you have to be buttoned up, you have yeah. to speak a certain way, um, yeah. present yourself yeah, a certain way, right? And, yeah, and I don't, no, I've heard it too. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Like, and I don't, I don't want anyone to feel that. I want you to show up as you are. I want you to enjoy practicing law. And I don't want this cultural part of practicing law to prevent you from moving forward, 
doing your practice and eventually getting a seat at the table. And so that's the other way I'd like to make an impact is by bringing in people to make them feel welcome into the law. That's awesome. Um, so how would you say your experience outside of the law now helps your clients? I know you mentioned like, you know, you did some work outside doing other type of stuff, but how are you really helping your clients right now? Yeah. Um, so, you know, in working in these different spaces, I really got to see how my potential clients and my clients function and what's really important to them. And I learned a different perspective in sort of problem solving. So when you're at a law firm and you're surrounded by lawyers, it often feels like there's only one way to accomplish something. There's only one right answer. And that's not the case. Right. I think if you go out into the startup world, right, you, you realize that your creativity, your ingenuity, your scrappiness is really, really valued. Yeah. And so I try to bring those values into my firm and, and into my problem solving, my legal problem solving when I talk to clients. Um, the other way I really help my outside of ex experiences have helped is in that I really listen to my clients. So when I practiced or when I left the practice of law, I, I did a lot of work in human centered design. And one of the big aspects of human centered design is having empathy and really listening to your client. And by really listening to someone, you can understand at a deeper level what their problem is, better define that problem and provide more tailored solutions. So I try to incorporate that into my practice as well. What does that so, mean, human centered design? I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's it's exactly that. The humans are at the center of what you're doing. So a lot of, you know, when, when you think about lawyers and law firms, lawyers come in with the attitude of like, I'm a lawyer, I went to law school, I know what's good for you, I know what's right for you. Whereas when you think about other businesses, the way they build their business is like, hey, customer, what are you looking for? What do you need? How can I provide this in a way that would be usable to you, would be feasible to you? Like, you know, you, you conduct customer interviews, you do A-B testing, you iterate based on like the feedback you receive from customers. And that doesn't quite happen in a law firm. It's usually like, here you go, here's your document or solution or whatever it is. Um, and, and I think it's helpful to bring in those principles of keeping the customer and client at the center of what we're doing, right? Because it is a service-based industry and I want to serve my clients to the best of my ability. And that's, I can do that by listening to them. Shafal, you know, just before I forget, I think that's something you could actually teach about in, on a webinar, like in Lawyer Stories Connect, like, cause I think that's so important. Like that is just, that's a huge, important thing. And I know you actually do a lot of LinkedIn posts too, like nice LinkedIn posts that are really thoughtful. And you talked about contracts in one of your you know linkedin posts and i think that's like amazing like i'd love to hear more about that um yeah. at some point so you know if you want if you ever have a blog post we could put it on our website or like whatever but uh we could also you know you could teach about it but i think that that's uh, a really really good perspective thanks for sharing that yeah i appreciate that and and funny you mentioned that because at at one of my old jobs i did try to teach lawyers uh, design from a legal perspective. Human centered design. Tell me what it is. Human centered design. Centered design. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Keep talking. Yeah. No, I, so I, I worked with lawyers to kind of teach them how they can incorporate these principles into their work. Yep. So, you know, I gave them a framework of what design is, but also like at a practical level, how do you incorporate this into your day to day and how you work with partners and with clients, with whoever. So I'd be happy to write something for lawyer stories yeah i love that that's that's really cool i think that's so important um and so kind of switching gears i'm just curious did you ever have a mentor in the law i mean it sounds like you had mentors like your parents sort of like the entrepreneurial piece of you like that spirit but like how about as like a lawyer was there anybody that you turned to to be like hey how does this brief look like should i do this should i do that that sort of thing uh, there were folks, I think, at different parts of my career that I asked questions to, um, that I asked feedback from, but there was no consistent mentor ever throughout yeah. my law school career, or my, my legal career. I wish I did. I, I think that would have been incredibly valuable, but. Sure. It's never too late. I mean, I don't know if you like really need one, but 
it's like it's it's never too late to meet somebody who could you know you could bounce ideas off them so but yeah. yes i i understand that it is very uh it it kind of can be difficult if you don't have somebody there but obviously you're doing a fantastic job um without it so are shafali are most of your clients based in new york right now um most of them are based in new york yes okay all right um and tell us like what is the best part of being your own boss the best part of being my own boss that's a great question like is it is it just like the freedom to like maybe start work super early and then maybe like knock off a little early and go to a networking happy hour you don't have to punch out you don't have to punch the clock you don't have to take a half an hour lunch you don't have to like you know do your own billable hour like what is there any of that in there that might be helpful? yeah yeah that, that is all great i mean i really appreciate the flexibility of working for myself so it is like easy uh, or easier to go network when I want to, or if I want to meet someone for lunch or coffee in the middle of the day, right. I don't have to ask permission or tell someone where I'm going, which is amazing. Um, I, I think deciding how to run a law firm and, and how to speak to clients and how to build my own thing is actually the best part of it. Um, you know, when, when you work with other people or, or at large organizations, and I don't know if you ever felt this way, but I, I often felt like, oh, this could be done better. Or this could be done this way. Uh, and, and so now having the knowledge of having worked at many different places and with different people, um, it's nice to be able to make decisions on my own on, on how things will go. And it's nice to know that I'm the only one that can screw it up right like it's all in my hands it's a good thing and a bad thing but i i like having the yeah, ability to that accountability like, i'm the only one that's responsible for this do you think now that you've you know had the taste of and when did you launch your firm a couple was it a couple uh months? it's probably been like four months three four oh, months four months wow it's a baby so yeah. like, now that you have have the taste of working alone do you think you could ever go back to like working for somebody and this is this is not a quote if any like like your law firm is out there and you want to recruit Shafali, I think, you know, who knows, but what do you think? Like, is it, would it be hard to like go back? It would be so hard to go back. I, yeah. I don't think I could ever, and unless I was really, really in a position where I had to go back. Um, I, I would not, I, I will try my darn best to make sure that this works. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's one of those things I think law students get in terms of, they kind of drop you and they, they, they drop you in like the middle of nowhere and expect you to sort of like survive like that. I think like a survival thing is something like we pick up in yeah. law school, uh, whether we know it or not, it's just sort of like, okay, we have to finish this by this time. Like times of the essence, like we have to, and I think like hustling and figuring it out is probably part of like the, the breed and the caliber that we pick up from being, you know, a law student or a graduate actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, funny you say that. Somebody asked me yesterday if uh, a girlfriend or a partner or whatever had to describe my like my best strength or whatever, what would it be? And I said, it's the ability to figure things out. Like I, I don't know everything by any means, but I'm really confident in my ability to either right. Google it or ask the right person or get in touch with someone or get in front of someone who knew knows how to do the thing that I want to do. And, and I feel like I've done that through many aspects of my life, right? Whether it was like figuring out how to get into law school or changing careers or changing jobs or starting a firm or, or whatever else I've done in my life. I think I, um, that, that's something that's a, a huge valuable skill. Yeah. I mean, look, like the bar exam is the one thing where they want you to just like memorize everything until your head explodes. Um, but as a lawyer, like you, you're master researcher, right? Like that's how I, and so you'll figure it out. Like, you know, who to go to, you know, how to research it, you know, who to, you're very resourceful, I, I yeah. think like a professional, like resourceful person, exactly. <laughs> as a lawyer, right? Like you figure it out. Um, yeah. so let's just go over again. And I know you said it once, but I want to say it again, like what types of case I know female founders, um, you know, like, but what kind of cases are we, are we taking again? I know business related. I just want to list them again. Yeah. Um, so uh, the way I, I sort of uh, 
say my practice is I assist your business throughout its life cycle. So, and I will, I would like to meet my clients where they are. So whether that's pre-incorporation and they need help getting their business set up, um, they need help licensing, whether, whether they're growing and building relationships, like bringing on employees or leases or contractors or advisors or distributors or whatever, and they need contracts to cement those relationships to if they're a startup and they're looking to fundraise um, to all the way up to the point of, you know, they're ready to get acquired and they need assistance with M&A work. I can kind of do sort of the entire stretch of the life cycle of business. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And that gives you a lot to figure out. I mean, it's, it can't yeah. be boring because it's like different types of law that's like really incorporated in there. Like, you know, you got the copyrights, the trademarks, the IP, IP yeah, yeah. and the, you know, the, all all of it really so that's yeah. that's really um interesting that's a lot of work um so tell me what is your opinion shafali on lawyer to lawyer networking i uh i i think it's super valuable i i yeah. didn't realize to be honest how valuable valuable it would be but yeah. i think lawyers are um one great to bounce ideas off of and especially lawyers who own their own firms they're a great resource to understand how to run a firm how to scale a firm how to grow a firm but i think a lot of clients come from lawyer to lawyer referrals so it's great sure. to have relationships yeah yeah for sure i agree um so where do you see shafali legal in like five years or like down or maybe a year from now you just started three to four months ago so um uh, in, in five years, um, yeah, three to five years. I, yeah, I hope to have a couple of employees. I hope to have like a, a great established law firm, a steady stream of clients, uh, clients that are doing again that impactful work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope to have employees who are happy with the work that's being done, who feel fulfilled, who feel uh, like they're they're getting the most out of their law degree. So I hope to have a successful law firm. That's awesome. Um, is there anything we left out today? Any advice that you wanted to give that you didn't or something that I didn't touch on? I don't know, like if I, I tried to get get through everything uh, and explain your story and yeah. is there some um, stuff you wanna discuss? I, I think the last thing I'll say is um, thinking about pivoting careers. So I think when you are a lawyer, um, you, you go to law school, it's often easy to get siloed and funneled into a specific career path yeah and often it feels like that's the only career path i i got that messaging in law school and even after i started at a, one of the firms i started at it was like okay well you can't move to a bigger firm you can't move to corporate you can't move to that and so i think as lawyers we often get so caught up in like you started here you need to do this but i don't think that's the case mm -hmm. uh, i think we're at uh, age in society where people are going to have multiple careers yep. and they're not always going to be linear. So I think be sure. open to opportunity, be open to moving around. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay if you don't want to practice law. It's okay if you want to come back to law. It's okay if you want to do legal operations, if you want to do fashion, whatever it is. I think be really mindful of of what excites you, what lights you up, and and sort of try to talk to people in that industry and uh, keep an open mind. And you think you can do that at any age? I mean, within reason, like you can always kind of switch out, right? I think so. I, I I think so. I think it goes back to like that scrappiness and the resourcefulness. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, it'll get harder as you get older, but I think yeah. if you, you can network with the right people or put yourself in the right spaces, it makes it much easier. That's awesome. Shafali Lakani, that was awesome. Great, that was great. Is there anything else that you wanna you wanna share? That we... uh, I I think that's it. If there are folks that are interested in networking, please reach out. I'm happy to chat. Whether you're a lawyer yeah. or if you're a non-lawyer listening to this, I'm I'm super excited to meet you and hear your story. Love it. I love that. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Uh, you stay there. Yeah. Everybody else, thanks for tuning in. Wherever you are in the world today, enjoy yourselves. Cheers.